The resulting image, which represents spectral classes, was created without much involvement. Next steps involve making sense of the result. Generally, some of the spectral classes might make sense, but others are likely a mix of cover types. Normally, some field work would be conducted or other data um, uh, or use other data uh, to help make some determinations in land cover types. In addition, some manual processes to change groups of pixels can be expected. The interpretation and revision of the results are often involved and can easily take weeks or months of time, not just days. So look at the obvious. Water, oftentimes, is represented as a single class or maybe two classes. To make it easier for us to understand what the classes are representing, let's add a color composite of the TM SAC sub to the map display for comparison purposes. So I'm going to click Raster, Manage Colors, Create RGB, uh, or R.Composite. There we go. For red, I'm going to choose TM SAC sub 3. For green, I'm going to choose TM SAC sub 2. And for blue, I'm going to choose TM SAC sub 1. I'm going to make sure Add Created Maps to the Layer Tree is checked. And I'm going to click Run to run the tool. Oops, and it's asking for the name of the output. I forgot to do that. Uh, that is going to be TM SAC sub RGB. Now I can click Run. There we go. If no errors are shown in the command output, which none are shown here, I'm going to click close to close the tool. I'm going to view the map display and note that I can see the true color composite. So let's have it draw underneath the classification image. In the layer manager, I'm going to drag TM SAC sub unsoup class above the TM SAC sub RGB and release the mouse key. I should now see the classified image in the map display and I do. So I'm going to toggle the visibility of the classified image by checking and unchecking the checkbox next to the layer name in the layer manager. While toggling the visibility, determine which color represents the water features. Now that we've identified that the color yellow in our example uh, represents water, let's determine which class in the raster represents water. So in the layer manager, I'm going to select the TM SAC sub unsoup class, and then in the map display, I'm going to click the query raster vector maps button. I'm going to click on a cell in the map display that represents the water feature. So I'm going to click on a yellow cell here. And it's going to perform a query. And on the command console here in the layer manager, this displays the results of our query. So in this our case here, we can see that class 1 represents water features. Now that we know that class 1 represents water features, <clears throat> let's only apply color to that class to easily see where the water is identified. To do that, I'm going to click Raster, Manage Colors, Color Tables, which is R.Colors. This will open the Color Tables tool. Click on the Manual tab and read the following sections. Name, Description, which is down here, and Examples. So that's all these down here. And the short of it is, is that a color table uh, modifies the color table associated with the raster map layer and allows us to assign different colors to different classes. So I'm going to click the Required tab and the name of the input raster map I'm going to set the TM SAC sub unsoup class which is already selected. I'm going to click the colors tab and in the or enter values interactively box I'm going to enter one space yellow and then default gray and so that assigns the class one you can see over here to the left the color of yellow and then the default, which means all other values, class values, that will be gray. I'm going to click Run to set the color table. I'm going to click Close. And now you can see uh, that the water is isolated. Most of the spectral class 1 falls along the river and is likely correct. However, some pixels in class 1 fall on agriculture fields in the southwest corner, as you can see here. 
When an image analyst is evaluating and trying to determine the land cover types in an unsupervised classification, it can be useful to label the spectral classes to prospective land cover types. Now note, most of the spectral classes will not represent a single land cover class. This is because a human creates a land cover classification scheme, whereas the unsupervised classification is categorizing pixels into similar, similar spectral groups, which may or may not relate to specific land cover types. Since the land cover types are not known when the unsupervised classification completes additional work and investigation is required to refine the spectral classes into specific land cover types. To make a first attempt at determining the land cover types, the analyst can label possible land cover types for each spectral class. For spectral class 1, since this category seems to represent water cover types, the spectral class can be labeled water. And so now that we know that class 1 represents water, let's recolorize all classes, then change the class label from 1 to water. And so I'm going to reopen the r.color tool. Here we go. And um, I'm going to go to the colors and make sure that the or enter values uh, interactively is, is empty. And for the type of color table, I'm going to choose rainbow. There we go. And this is going to revert the classified image back to its original colors. So I'm going to click run. And then click close. Now I'm going to click raster change category values and layers labels sorry and then reclassify r dot reclass click on the manual tab and read the manual to understand what it does the short of it is that it reclassifies a raster map based on the category values that we provide we're now going to go back to the required tab and for the raster map to be reclassified this is tm sac sub unsuit class the name for the output raster map is going to be tm sac sub un soup class reclass and add created maps into layer tree should be checked now I'm going to click on the optional tab and I'm going to enter these values interactively oops uh, let's see here oh, sorry it's, it's still on the uh, required tab uh, I'm going to be one space equals space one and then star I'm sorry uh, space water and then star space equals star I'm going to click run to reclassify the raster then I'm going to click close to close the tool so you probably notice that the newly added reclassified layer looks exactly the same as the original raster and that's normal what has changed is the class label so let's see what I actually changed here so in the layer manager in the map layers tab I'm going to make sure that the reclass is selected I'm then going to choose the query raster vector maps button and I'm going to click on a water feature cell now we're going to inspect the command console to see what was returned and notice now that instead of class 1, 1 is now specified as water. Reclassifying the raster map makes it more intuitive when trying to understand or query the layer in future operations. The other classes can be assigned in a similar fashion. So uh, it, it can be time consuming to uh, specify the names for each spectral class classes. Um, and it takes some serious review and visual analysis and uh, consultation of ancillary or reference data and often field work. Uh, to get more practice, work on some of the other classes using the same methods to label the spectral classes at this point. No additional ancillary information exists to continue this exercise. So students not familiar with the Sacramento area can use Google Maps or Google Earth to review high resolution image data that can assist uh, in assigning spectral classes to the prospective cover, land cover types.